Right. Um, last video I recorded in this series, I decided I wanted to get a geometric proof of the addition rule for sine. And I got quite badly bogged down um, failing to do that. Uh, I'm going to have uh, sometimes the best thing to do there is just to stop and come back and try almost exactly the same thing all over again. Uh, that's what I plan to do. So I'm still going to be trying to work out a geometric proof for the addition rule of the sign. I just hope I'll be a bit more um, competent about it this time. Um, so let's start with a nice fresh sheet of paper, uh, virtual paper, of course. But uh, <clears throat> I'm sort of wondering whether it might help to uh, draw a circle. Not quite sure why that would be helpful. I'm going to do it anyway. So here's a nice big circle. And then here's my angle theta. Here's my angle phi, which I'm trying to make a little bit bigger than theta, but not too much. And so sine theta plus phi is just the y coordinate, which I won't drop the perpendicular there. I'll just say it's this distance. It's, sine. it's a unit circle, obviously. And I want somehow to find, to decompose that length as sine theta cos phi and cos theta sine phi. And my problem is that if I just draw drop a perpendicular here, which would be the obvious thing to do, if I look at this length here, uh, what is it? Well, I don't think it's either sine theta cos phi or cos theta sine phi. Let me just check that. Uh, so what is this length? This length is cos phi. Yeah, so this length here is cos phi times tan theta rather than cos phi times sine theta. So that's my, you could say in a nutshell, that's where things are. Oh, but what about if I, so I've had another, so that, that doesn't work straight away. It doesn't sort of decompose in a totally obvious way, which is not surprising actually, because if one looks at this picture, uh, then one would see that, um, you know, if, I, if, if that, were to decompose like that and that, I'd be doing something not at all symmetrical between phi and theta in some sense. So what would be the two... I'm just wondering whether if I drop a perpendicular like that and then drop a perpendicular like that, does that do anything? Um, I might just give it a try. I, 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 I'm, I'm, this is, I'm slightly sort of just guessing something at this point hoping that it might give me something. So then the two lengths that I'm actually going to be interested in for this approach will be, so I'm, I'm, I've decomposed this vertical distance now into two parts, that and that. Does that work? So first of all, let's work out. I think this one looks as it's going to be easier to work out. So what is the length of this, the hypotenuse of this bottom triangle? it's going to be cos phi, which is very promising. And then that cos phi is going to be multiplied by sine theta. So that is very good news. That's sine theta cos phi. It's just weird. Yesterday I struggled for half an hour or something, failing to come up with a proof. And it looks so I'm actually now just about to come up with a proof in, in a very short order. So this length here is um, sine phi. Uh, so what I need is for this angle to be theta, and it is because that triangle is similar to that triangle because I've just rotated this through uh, through theta. And so yeah, so that thing there is cos theta sine phi. Well. <clears throat> Feel I feel I need to sort of say something at this point. So if you're watching this series of videos and you see that I conveniently stop when I get stuck and come back and then almost immediately write down a complete proof, it might look as though I've cheated. And well, it's up to you what to believe, but I, I hereby declare that I haven't cheated. In fact, what you've just seen is um, 
exactly the phenomenon I was talking about a moment ago, that sometimes if you just find yourself going down wrong paths, then just giving up and going and living a life, so to speak, and uh, coming back when you're refreshed and you start again and somehow it all sort of drops out very quickly. Uh, so that was, I'm quite happy about that. Let me now specialize to the case where phi equals theta because that was the one I was most interested in. So, uh, and maybe I don't have to draw that circle anymore. So I have, Theta and theta. This is one. And the claim was that if I do that and then I do that, then I also draw that. Then this will be. Uh, well, both these lengths will be sine theta, cos theta, but for slightly different reasons. This is cos theta multiplied by sine theta, and this is sine theta multiplied by cos theta. Uh, Which actually means I, I noticed that if, if I do this, I just want to sort of try to reduce any feeling of magic. I have this triangle duplicated now. So that's um, a sine theta. And this is another. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. Oh. So I've just drawn a diagram, but I shouldn't have drawn it quite this this point should equal this point so let me just redraw uh, so I have theta theta so obviously if I drop a perpendicular to here and then continue in the same direction then just by symmetry, I'm just reflecting whatever. So I, I'm going to hit this point here. So that's a one there. That's a one there. And now I can see it much more clearly. So that distance is sine theta cos theta. And that distance is also sine theta cos theta because those two triangles are actually even congruent. It's better still. And obviously the sum of those two distances equals this distance, which is sine of two theta. So now I think we can see very, very clearly um, that there's some hope then of going back and feeding that in to the diagram that we had before, but then not with an arbitrary theta, but with this uh, four to sine 10, sine 80, sine 70, or sine 40, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit anxious about this though, and my residual anxiety about eliminating um, trig from the picture is that uh, I've used the sign rule, and so I somehow need to sort of get rid of my. I use it quite in quite a significant way. Um, so if I want to get a proof that eliminates trigonometry, how does one, I've got, how can I get a sort of, what does it even mean to say that one could have a geometrical proof of the sign rule that doesn't, uh, actually maybe that's okay, that's, that's what I should think about next. Um, but actually just another thing, a point I wanted to make was that it may be that instead of trying to write down the, the, the trig proof and remove the trigonometry from each step in succession, which could lead to a sort of hideously complicated geometrical proof. Maybe I should just kind of just keep in the background the knowledge that that's in principle possible, which will then sort of guide me towards a geometrical proof of a slightly different kind. So then if I want to do that, I've got to um, 
I've got to get return to the question about what it is that's special about these angles, 40 and 50 and those sorts of things. And um, <clears throat> looking at this proof that I found yesterday, we can see that actually there is something quite special about it, which is that over here, so that the, whenever I had a sine of an angle and sine of 90 minus that angle, that's great because by the um, sine two theta equal two sine theta cos theta thing, and the, the sine of 90 is, it gives me the cos. Uh, so sine of, we could actually just write down actually, uh, uh, I'll put this in red because I didn't do it yesterday. And so I just want to be clear what, so we have a, 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 a variant form of um, just two sine theta sine 90 minus theta equals sine two theta. So if we apply it directly like that, so here we have uh, two times two sine 10, two sine 90 minus 10. So that gave us the, the two sine 20. And then the two sine 20 sine 70 was another example of that. So that gave us a sine 40. And we already had a sine 40. So what was significant was that uh, where was an 80 coming from? So oh, this 100 gave me an 80 as well because sine 100 equals sine 80. Um, so the sort of coincidence, I think, is that 2 times this 40. Uh, no, it's that um, this 100, which was a sine... 80, which equaled a cos 10. Um, <clears throat> so I think the fact that I have a cos of 10 here and that 10, when doubled twice, gives me 40 is, in some sense, the fact that uh, is not true if I change some of these angles around a bit. So this one will sort of go down and that one go up or something like that. And so there's a sort of point at which the various things that need to be equal are equal. Um, and so I somehow want to bear that in mind when um, coming up with the proof. Just another thought that I'm having is that I think we have that this line is parallel to this one. I think I've already used that, but maybe we should just... Oh, yes. So we had a 30 here and a 30 here. So those two lines are parallel. Um, so I'm wondering whether... <clears throat> I want to sort of isolate this part of the diagram. So I have a an angle of, of yes, yeah, so I'm putting this in red again because I'm adding it to what I did yesterday. I, I'm drawing something that I want to then port over. Uh, so I have 40, 30, 50, 100. Um, and then this line is parallel to this one. <clears throat> and I want it to meet this point here. What extra information have I got? Um, it needs... Um, I need a bit more because otherwise I could just move this line up and down. I need something to do with the length of this line. In other words, just <clears throat> drawing a trapezium sort of shape with these angles is not going to be enough because this line is free to slide up and down. 
So some extra piece of information is needed in order to guarantee that all these points meet in the same place. Um, what's the simplest thing I can do? So I know that this length equals this length. Uh, so if I just carry on with this line here, and I've also got that sort of that angle there is a 20 degree angle. Um, which will tell me that that's a 60 degree angle. That's actually potentially nice. I haven't spotted that. Uh, let me see if that is enough to uh, let's try to remember. Check if I'm really on the ball, I'll be able to select this, but I can't remember how to do that. Um, If I try and select some portion of this and paste it somewhere else, I am going to get into serious trouble. So <clears throat> I'm going to just to take me time out for a second while I try to reproduce that diagram. So I had a... Oh, I'll go back to black now. I have a horizontal line here. I have a what was that angle? I won't say 30, but it was 30. And then a 40 up at the top. That's a bit too small to be 30. Let's make it a little bit bigger so I can. 30, 40, and then 40. And I continue that down. Um, oh bother, it's going to disappear. Right, I continue that down so that that total length equals that total length. Then I have a thing here. And something like that. And then this goes up. Um, and that's also 30. So those two lines are parallel. And those two lines have the same length. And if I draw this in here, I have also that these three lengths are all the same. And I want that this point here is the same as this point here. Um, and I know that this is 80, that's 50, so on. Uh, so 80, 50 is 130, so I have another 50 there, but that, I don't really care about that one. Um, and this one here is 20. <clears throat> and actually up here we've got 20. So it would also be enough to prove that this length is equal to this length. Notice that I can't say that that length equals that length because I don't know that that point is equal to that point. But if I did, then I'd have this length is equal to that length. And I think usually in that situation, the converse will hold as well. But could that actually be nice? Is there some quick proof that that length equals this length? But what is this length? Uh, I think we know that this length is this length. No, what am I saying? That's rubbish. Where is this? Okay, so that's 20, and this one is also 20. And I definitely used at some point the fact that sine of 40 
is 2 sine 20 cos 20. So can I, this is where I want to try and make it geometrical. So I want somehow to, what are the, what are the constructions I did to achieve that? I dropped a couple of perpendiculars. So where is my sine of 40? Here's my hypotenuse. So I can get it by dropping a perpendicular from here to this line or from here to this line. Which of those is going to be more promising? I think this one just crosses a whole lot of stuff that um, it just creates a whole even more mess than we had before. Whereas this one at least is a... Is that... that also going to be unpleasant. Um, I think this is also going to be not very nice. So any perpendiculars I can drop that will look at least a little bit nice. Um, maybe that one. And then I would want to create two of these triangle-y things. Somehow it's telling me to decompose. This seems to be telling me to decompose a perpendicular as two chunks like that. And yet I can't find a relevant perpendicular to decompose. Like that one. I just don't know what's so interesting about that point there. I have that one, I don't know what's so interesting about that point there, and here I don't know what's so interesting about that point. So that doesn't seem to help very much. Not saying it, it definitely can't, but I don't see it. Where did the 10 degrees come from? Um, there was a 10 degrees that came from the fact that if you do a vertical line here, you get 10 degrees with the thing. But where it actually came from in the calculations was that when you're working out this length, it was 2 sine 10. Um, because we had to split that. Ah, oh, so we did, in fact, split that angle up yet again. So there, in fact, we perhaps... Let's just put one of those in because that did came come into the calculation. We had a two sine of ten, and there's another one over here. So we can sort of see that we are actually building up something to do with forty. Uh, this looks as though it may may go somewhere. So um, so that length is sine ten because that's one, and I've got a ten degree thing here. So that's 2 sine 10, and I don't, sorry, I don't really care about the 2 sine 10 so much as the, I want a sine 10 times sine 80 to come up in a natural way. So that 80 there is looking sort of promising. So here's a, this length here is sine 10. And if I multiply that by sine of 80, uh, I'm actually dropping a perpendicular to here. So I'm interested in this funny little triangle here, which is actually what I get if I join those two points. And then I look at just the this distance here. So that distance here is going to be um, sine of 10 times another sine of 10. 
no, sine of 10 times cos of 10, I mean, or sine of 10 times sine of 80. And two of those equals sine of 20. Where is the sine of 20 in, in this picture? That's less clear. But if I have a one, I've got a one here uh, and a 20 degree angle there, then I'm getting it by dropping a perpendicular um, yes, it's the distance from here to here if I drop a perpendicular, so that length there should equal, I think I'll just check this in a minute this length here this one was this is one times sine of twenty, and this one was two sine ten sine eighty that one and that one. So I can prove it trigonometrically. Can I just see a reason that this length is equal to this length? It's not quite so clear, but if I to drop a perpendicular there, I think that does it, possibly. If I drop a perpendicular there, I think this angle will, will turn out to be what I want. And... Um, if I go up here, it will be it will turn out to be the same. I'm not going to check that. I, I think I can prove that this length equals this length by dropping that line there and that perpendicular here and looking at similar triangles and congruent triangles and that kind of thing and, and getting that this is actually same, the same as this. Uh, so if I've done that, then I will have a geometrical proof that this length equals this length. It seems seems quite a long way away from proving that this length equals this length, on the other hand. Um, Still, I feel that I'm um, getting somewhere. Let me just see what I, if I write 2 sine 20, sine 70 equals sine 40. Can I see a 70? I'm sure there was a 70 in this diagram somewhere. Um, unless the 70 was actually a sort of 110, but the sine of 70 is the same as a sine of 110. And we had 110 here, I believe. This was 40 and 30. So that angle there is 110. Um, but that means that this angle here is 70. But have I got a triangle that includes that angle? And how did I get that 2 sine 10 sine 80? Maybe I want to look at sine 20 cos 20 or something. Uh, but sine 20, ah. Oh, so this thing here is a sine 20. And if I want to multiply that by cos 20, that means I drop a perpendicular again. If I do that, drop a perpendicular to here. Um, That'll get, and then if I, 
I have the same thing over on the other side. But what on earth is that? I now want to argue that this length, I'm wondering whether I want to argue that this length is actually equal to one of these lengths, whatever this funny length actually is. I'm sort of climbing slowly up. So this thing here will be sine of 40. Now, where did my sine of 40 otherwise appear? Um, one. By dropping a perpendicular from this onto here. And where, where did it appear before? We had that one, no, this angle. So this length, one divided by sine of 110, I think I must have written this down somewhere, equals um, this big length, L over sine of 40, which implies L sine of 110, which is the same as sine of 70 equals sine 40. So that sine 40 came out of the sine rule. Um, so I think without further ado, I've got, got a tiny bit more time. I need to remind myself how to prove the sine rule. Um, except that I think I'm not going to do that because I have actually got limited time and there's a sufficiently high risk that I'll, what will, what happened yesterday will happen again. So I think trying to reconstruct the proof of the sine rule, which is something I would hope would take almost no time, um, but it might. I might sort of get into a muddle in the way that I did in the last uh, video with this um, addition rule for sine, finding a geometrical proof. Um, or should I just quickly try and do it? Tell you what, I'll just give it a if it doesn't come out almost instantly, then I will stop. But uh, I have an arbitrary sort of triangle. And I've got A and angle A and B and angle B. And I suppose I put in a C, but if I can just show that two of them are equal, I'll be fine. Uh, so I want, if I want A over sine A, equals b over sine b that's the same as it's enough to prove that uh, a well it's equivalent to a sine b equals b sine a it will take dividing by zero and that sort of thing so where's an a sine b um not absolutely well if i drop a perpendicular here then that length there is a times sine b and it's also b times sine a so actually that's very straightforward so it did come out almost immediately i shouldn't have been scared um so that tells me that if i want to use the sine rule for two particular lengths i should drop a perpendicular uh Onto the onto the other length that's not involved. So, if I'm using the sine rule here, I use the sine rule to get this length from this length, and also to get this length from this length. So that's telling me that I want to drop that perpendicular, and also that perpendicular. And that's actually very nice because I was already, I think, dropping some of those perpendiculars. Um, so that's a nice clue. I haven't got time to explore that thought. But next time, I think I, uh, it, uh, there will be yet another one. Uh, I've made a bit of progress here. I've sort of got an idea for how to proceed, which I will try to explore in a future video.
which is that, so just to re recapitulate, the sine rule can be, when you're relating two lengths, you can get it by dropping a perpendicular of the angle between them onto the third length. So that suggests that if I want to get a geometrical proof that um, is some in some sense equivalent to the trigonometrical proof that I've found, then what I should do is look at the places where I use the sine rule and then just drop perpendiculars um, corresponding to those uses, usages of the sine rule. Once I've got those perpendiculars, then I might have some length, some extra constructions that I can then use to do some reasoning. So that's the plan. No time to do it right now, but I'm feeling as though I may be edging closer to the proper proof of this theorem rather than the uh, cheating trig proof.